Hey, what's going on everyone? So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Iceco JP40 portable refrigerator slash freezer. Now this thing can be used as a cooler or as a freezer to keep your things cold or frozen. Now we're gonna be putting this thing through its paces today, using it with a few different solar generators and some AC, seeing what kind of power this thing uses. And by the end of this video, hopefully you guys know everything you need to know about this 43 quart cooler and if it's right for you if you've been looking for one of these now I've been wanting one of these ever since I went on a five-day camping trip with my family and we were in 90 some degree heat every day the ice in the cooler was melting like crazy while the sun was shining and I really hated having to buy ice every day to put in that cooler all your stuff getting wet or meat leaked and it was just nasty by the end of the trip and I think this is going to work really well with some solar panels, keeping my portable solar generators charged up and running this thing on occasions like that. Now, as a disclaimer, Iceco did send me this for testing and review, but if you guys are interested in one of these and feel that it's right for you after watching this video and you've been looking for one of these, I'll leave an affiliate link down below and also a coupon code where you can save a few bucks and pick one of these up. If you do use that link, it will help support the channel. And thanks in advance, guys. I really appreciate the support. Let's get into the testing. I almost forgot guys and one thing that this thing has is a Seacop Danfloss compressor which is one of the best in the industry and is supposed to be very efficient on power so that's one thing I'm definitely excited about testing and it comes with a five-year warranty on the compressor and a one-year warranty on everything else which is pretty amazing for this cooler now let's get into the testing guys all right so the first test we're going to do is we're going to set the cooler at zero degrees plugged into a kilowatt meter and we're going to pre-chill this thing down to zero degrees and see how long it takes and how many watt hours of power it uses so that dc to ac conversion is going to take about two to two and a half watts of power so it is going to be more efficient to run this on dc than it is on ac but with that being said right now it is 69 degrees fahrenheit inside the cooler now i have my gas grill wireless thermometer hooked up in there but i do have five other temperature thermometers inside this cooler so we'll come back about every half hour and see what the temperature is at until it gets down to zero degrees i'm going to turn it on leave it in max mode and i'm going to set it for zero degrees it is saying it is 61 degrees currently inside the cooler and according to the thermometers that are in there it's right around 68 to 69 degrees so it is using currently about 51 watts of power plugged into the AC on max mode. I'll see you guys in a little bit. So it's been 33 and a half minutes. The bottom compartment's at 19 degrees. The top compartment's at 50. The cooler says 30 degrees. And it's currently using right around 46 to 48 watts of power. So we're an hour into this test. It shows 35 degrees up top eight degrees in the bottom seven degrees on the cooler still set on max using 42 to 43 watts of power and it's used 40 some watt hours of power in the past hour so 40 some watts on average for about an hour to cool this thing down from 70 degrees to seven degrees so we'll leave it go just a little bit longer and we'll see how long it takes to get down to the zero degrees the cooler just shut off an hour and 16 minutes into the test. So an hour and 16 minutes to get it to go from 17 degrees down to zero degrees. According to this thermometer, the top compartment is 30 degrees and the bottom one is currently seven. The cooler says zero degrees. And right before the cooler shut off on max mode, it was only using around 40 watts. And in total for the past hour and 16 minutes, it used about 60 watt hours of power. So this is what you can expect if you're pre-chilling your freezer. So the one in the very bottom is reading three degrees. This one right here is reading about seven degrees. This one in the center is reading 10. So it's gonna be colder along the edges than in the center because it chills from the sides here. And then this one back here along the edge is nine degrees. So you could see the difference between the center and the bottom it's at two degrees and that one's at nine degrees. So you are gonna have about a seven to 10 degrees difference from the bottom to the top of the cooler. And then in here, it's showing 32 degrees on both the digital one and on this one here. So this will 
be just above freezing. If you keep stuff up against this and you have the cooler set down really, really low and it's running continuously, it may freeze over time if you don't open the lid every now and then and close it. So if you had some water or cans of pop or something up here, keep an eye on them that they don't freeze if you have the cooler in freezer mode set down really low below zero degrees. Pretty nice overall, really happy with it. And that's about what you can expect if you were pre-chilling your cooler. And let's get on with the next test. All right, so it's been a few hours. It says the top is at 27, the bottom is at 13, but the cooler says zero. So this does not always read accurately. It's supposed to read off the center line in the cooler, but I've noticed sometimes it's not accurate. So I recommend getting some of these thermometers and putting them throughout whenever you're using this. That way you could keep an eye on your food temperatures. So it's showing 10 degrees on this one, about 12, 13 on that one, seven degrees on the bottom one, 10 degrees on that one, and 26 degrees on this one up here. So my digital thermometer, I just kind of have it hung there in the center, just hanging out. And the temperatures will probably be a little bit different and hold a little bit better if this thing was packed with food. So one nice thing that comes with this cooler that you do not have to buy additionally is a nice foam insulated cover. And that's gonna protect the cooler from the sunlight most of all. That's the main thing that I'm excited about for this cover, but it's also gonna give it some kind of insulation value to keep that sun from baking on this unit, from heating it up. It's gonna prevent it from getting super hot on top. And like I said, it's gonna protect it. If it does sprinkle a little bit with rain, it will keep this dry here. And just gonna be a nice protective cover to keep this thing looking new for a long time. So it's really nice that they include this cover easily installed, zips up. Your vents are still open at the bottom for the cooler to run while this is on. You can still access your handles while this cover's on. And it also has two pockets in the side here to store your cables in there. So really nice cover. Glad they include this with it. This unit also comes with a six foot AC power cord, an eight foot DC cigarette lighter plug adapter, and then a 20 foot extension cable for your cigarette lighter 12 volt plug adapter. So if you put the extension cable onto the other cable, you could get this cooler 20 foot away from your cigarette lighter port or your portable power station. That way you can have your power station maybe behind your solar panel charging and this thing can be 20 foot away in the shade because ultimately you really wanna keep this thing in the shade while it is cooling to get better efficiency but sometimes that's not always easy, but that will be a little bit easier with the 20 foot of cable that they do give you. And what's pretty nice about this extension cable here is it has like a little locking mechanism in there that attaches to this red thing here. So when you lock this together, it does stay together pretty well on that extension piece. All right, so the reason I wanted to go with the JP40 series cooler over the JP30 or the JP50 was because of the height. The height of the JP30 is 15 inches tall, the JP40 is 17 and a half inches tall, and the JP50 is almost 21 inches tall. So I was afraid that being 21 inches tall, which is three and a half inches taller than this, that the lid would not open all the way without hitting the roof in my wife's CRV. And I was right, this one works perfect. It opens just enough to where you can leave it open all the way. It clears this just fine. And if I would have went with the one that was three and a half inches taller, it would have hit here and probably would have only been able to open the lid to here. So I'm glad I made the choice with the JP40 series. And for size on these three units, the other measurements, the width and the length is the same on all three models. So the only difference between the JP30, 40 and 50 is the height. So on the width of this cooler, it is 13.8 inches. And on the length, it is 23 inches on all models. Now that length of 23 inches is without the handles on, it's cooler to cooler. So with the handles installed, you're gonna add about another two and a half inches, which makes it about 25 and a half inches total from handle to handle. So if you need a little extra room or a little tighter of a space to fit this cooler, you can take these handles off and make it a little bit more compact, but it'll just be a little bit harder to carry around. All right, so now I have the cooler setting up on a two by four, so it's three and a half inches taller. This is about what the JP50 would look like as far as height in the back of my wife's CRV. And like I said, you cannot open the lid all the way, so you'd have to hold it up to get in there. Not that big of a deal. It does still open pretty good, so I probably would have been okay with the JP50 as well. All right, so in my wife's back seat of the CRV, I have it blocked up. This is what the JP50 would look like. You can still get in there a little bit tight, but it would work. And this is what the JP30 looks like in there with no blocking. Opens a lot 
better with the lid. And to be honest, I'll probably be spinning this thing around and having the vent holes out here when it's on because I don't want to block this other vent hole being up against the seat like this because that compressor has to vent. So more than likely, I'm going to travel with it like this when we're on trips, going on vacation and things like that. And a few things to know when you're running this on your vehicle. Right now I have it set in max mode. It's using 14.9 watts at 3.74 amps, 13.21 volts. I do have her car running. And when you're running this thing in your vehicle, you are gonna wanna have your car running so that you don't drain your battery. But they do have a nice feature on the back of the unit which has a switch that allows you to adjust your cutoff points of the cooler so that your battery doesn't drain. On low, you can have it set to cut out at 9.6 volts. On medium, it'll cut out at 10.1, and on high, it'll cut out at 11.1. And that will allow your vehicle to still start if you select it to high, and it won't drain your battery down all the way. Now, how I'm gonna be using this thing is I'm probably gonna be running a portable solar generator off the outlet in the car to keep this charged and then this has pass through charging so i'll probably plug the cooler into that and the reason i'll do that is because when we go to stop somewhere i don't have to worry about this thing getting warm because it'll just automatically keep running off the solar generator and then when i start the vehicle the vehicle will recharge the solar generator and essentially i won't have to worry about it draining my battery because my outlet in the car only comes on when the ignition is on and that's another thing to know some vehicles the cigarette letter port will be on at all times if you have like a 12 volt accessory power port and some vehicles it only comes on with the key so make sure if yours has power all the time that you don't drain your battery prematurely and I actually might be using it sideways like this on trips because of the way the vents are. I don't want to pack them vents in tight. But let me know in the comments below what you would plan on using this cooler for if you had one. I think it would be awesome if you were planning on going to a trip, doing some grocery shopping and buying a bunch of meats. Put this thing on freezer mode an hour before you leave your house, take it with you, and then you could throw your meat in there and you don't have to worry about where you stop on your way home. But let me know down below where you guys would plan on using this. Let's get back into some other testing. So now I got the Iceco JP40 cooler plugged into my NextPal portable solar battery station. Now this is a 290 some watt hour power station here. The reason why I'm using this one is because it's the smallest one that I have. So we're gonna test out that efficiency on that CCOP compressor and see exactly how good it is because it's supposed to be one of the best in the industry as far as power consumption goes. So right now I have the cooler set to 36 degrees. It is currently 39 degrees and the cooler is running. I have it set on eco mode and it's using between 27 to 32 watts of energy from this next pile portable power station. And wait till you guys see how much food I packed into this thing, how many drinks and different things I put in here. When I initially picked out the size of this thing, I was a little bit concerned about how small it was gonna be. I didn't think I was gonna get that much in it, but you actually can pack a lot of stuff in these coolers because you don't need to take up space by adding ice like you do in a normal cooler. My other coolers are pretty big and you could put a lot of stuff in there, but by the time you add half of the volume of ice and everything gets all wet and soggy, that takes up a lot of room and not having to put ice in this thing is awesome. Your stuff doesn't get wet, it doesn't get soggy, and you have a lot of extra capacity because you don't have to add that ice. So I'll pull everything out of here later, wait till you guys see what I got in it. So today's current temperature is 65 degrees. It's gonna be a high of 70 today. So we are gonna stick this thing over in the shade, let it run, because ultimately you don't want it sitting out in the sun, baking and losing efficiency. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so it has been seven hours and 42 minutes. This test has taken way longer than I thought. I thought for sure it was gonna drain the battery a lot faster than this. I think maybe it has to do with it only being 70 degrees today. If it was warmer, I'm sure it would have drained it faster, but so far it is doing excellent. It's actually running right now and it's using between 27 to 30 watts roughly while it is on. After the first three and a half hours, I did set the temperature down to 34 degrees from 36 degrees. So that's what it's been set at for the past four hours. But the sun's starting to go down now, so I'm gonna take it in the house and let it set overnight and see if this thing is still running in the morning. I'm gonna leave it set at 34 degrees. Now, one thing I did notice while using this, whatever you have this temperature set to, like I said, right now I have it set to 34 degrees. The food on top stays about five degrees or so warmer than what it does down below, because obviously cold air sinks, warm air rises, so 
keep that in mind your colder items you're going to want to put lower in the cooler and the items that you don't need to be as cold you can keep up top and if you get the taller version the jp50 it's probably going to have more of a fluctuation between the bottom temperature and the top temperature in that one as well the jp30 will probably have a little bit closer temperature because it is shorter. So you can see that I'm only down about one battery bar currently. And like I said, this thing has been running for seven hours and 45 minutes now. So open this thing up and you can see that the temperature on top, just about 39 degrees. And it says 36 up here. So we're about a three degree variance right now. And that's probably because the compressor is running and it's cooling back down. But once it reaches the 30, four degrees temperature and the compressor shuts off. After a while, I noticed there's roughly around a five degree difference. All right, so it's been two hours and 45 minutes. It's the next morning. It's on currently using right around 30 watts again still. I still have it set to 34 degrees and the ambient temperature in here is 65 degrees. So this is crazy guys. I thought for sure this thing would have been dead by now. And it's very, very quiet. It's running on eco mode right now. The microphone's about two feet away from the cooler. And it's very, very quiet. That's an eco mode. Let me switch it over to max mode. You can hear it ramp up just a little bit, but it's still really, really quiet. And it's currently using about 42 to 45 watts on max mode. All right, so it has now been 24 hours since I started this test. I did make an adapter now that I have my watt meter plugged in line with it to see exactly how many watts we draw. The refrigerator is currently running. Right now it's using 2.3 to 2.7 amps drawing 28.5 watts and the maximum wattage that it has drawn since I installed this was 45.7 watts. That was the peak draw and it is in eco mode. So very interesting to see the results with this. Can't believe this has lasted 24 hours already and that's with the temperature being set about 30 degrees lower than the ambient temperature in the room. I'm going to go ahead and change this to max mode and bump it down to 32 degrees for the rest of this test because 24 hours is definitely plenty. So we're gonna see how much power this uses here in max mode set to 32 degrees. So it's now using 46 watts. So about 18 watts more on max mode than what eco mode was and 3.38 amps. All right, so it's been about 26 hours since I started this test. I'm gonna call that a wrap because the power station's just about dead. So just to recap, I ran this thing the first three and a half hours at a 70 degree ambient temperature and had the cooler set at 36 degrees. Then I bumped it down to 34 degrees, ran that for the next 20 and a half hours. And then I, and those were both on eco mode. And then at the 24 hour mark, I set it to 32 degrees, ran it on max mode and the power station is now pretty much dead and it's been at least set to 30 degrees lower than the ambient temperature. Now, when I had it on max mode here at the end, it was using 56.9 watts peak at the peak output on max mode set at 32. But let me take everything out of here and show you guys exactly how much stuff I packed into this thing. So it says the inside cooler temperature is 32 degrees. And according to my thermometer in here, it is about 38, 39 degrees. So like I said, about five to seven degree difference according to this when this was sitting on top. Another nice feature I like about this cooler is it has a wire basket and you could take this thing out, take it in your house, pack it up, and you could take this thing out to make this cooler lighter if you need to pick it up to move it. But you could take this in, pack it up, leave it in your refrigerator till you're ready to go. Then you could take it out and put it in there and that rack's also going to provide a little bit of airspace around your food so that your food's not up against touching the wall and going to allow better circulation in there as well when it's packed tightly like this. So I got a bunch of bottles of water in here to take up some space. We'll count them all once I get them all out of here. 
plenty of room to stick a dozen of eggs up on end in here. Now I did take out the center divider to gain a little bit extra room. You could put a half a gallon of orange juice or milk or whatever up right in there. Here's the milk, some chicken salad, ketchup, big thing of yogurt, big thing of creamer, jelly, Miracle Whip, more water, <laughs> some cheese. And like I said, anything you want to stay a little bit colder, keep towards the bottom. A couple sticks of butter, a couple cheese sticks. So this is all the stuff that I had packed just into the refrigerator side of this JP40 cooler slash freezer. Pretty good amount of stuff in my opinion. Now up top is where it stays around 10 degrees warmer than what you have this set to. And I put some vegetables up there, some carrots, some lettuce. Now I kept this lettuce up against this wall here because I noticed that it stays a little cooler up against this wall versus against the back wall. Probably because it cools in here possibly. So anything you want to stay a little bit chilled, a little more uh, in this compartment, keep up against this wall. And last but not least, I have four cans of soda back here. Now these aren't super cold but they're definitely cold enough to drink. So there is everything I had packed into this cooler for this test. Pretty impressive in my opinion and just sipped power very minimally in that test. I was very surprised. So now let's get into the next test. All right, so we're four hours into this test of the cooler being set at zero degrees, running off the Rock Pals Freeman 600. It's down to 74%, so it used 26% of its capacity to run this for the past four hours. And it has been running a lot, right around 41 watts when it's running. It has been peaking up to around 58 watts and then runs pretty consistently around 41. It shows zero degrees in there currently. The compressor just shut off and it's been on max mode this entire time for the past four hours. So the temperature down in the towards the bottom is about five degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature is off slightly. You could still see pretty much a frost line about halfway up at the top's getting colder than the bottom as far as the walls go. I'll pull this out to show you. So you could see the frost line about halfway up. Freezer pops are not frozen in the center yet. The outside ones are frozen, but they were frozen when I stuck them in here. Ice still looks good. Pork chop still looks good and the water is still not frozen. So we will check this again in about seven hours. All right, so we're almost 11 and a half hours into this test. This is the next morning. The Rock Pals Freeman 600 is still at 38%. The JP40 is running currently. We're gonna open it up and see what it looks like inside. All right, the center freeze pops are starting to freeze. Some of them are getting frozen. Pretty good, the outside ones are still frozen. Pork chops are still frozen. It's showing about seven degrees inside. And the ice still looks perfect. And water is not frozen up top. So far, so good. All right, so now I've had the freezer plugged into the AC wall outlet and the kilowatt meter for the last 12 hours. Set on zero degrees, it used 310 watt hours of power in the last 12 hours. It says one degree inside, and if we take a look, the ice is still perfect. Freeze pops are frozen. The water up top is still unfrozen, but very, very cold. So that's nice that you can keep stuff up top unfrozen while you're using this as a freezer and the pork chop is still solid, solid as a rock. So doing really well keeping stuff frozen down here and unfrozen up here, set at zero degrees. All right guys, so now my last test, I took my son to watch his friend's soccer game today, then I had to run to Lowe's and get some things, so I threw the cooler in my truck, packed it up with a bunch of water, a thing of carrots with some ranch and some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and we had it out. Now, I just got back home, it's been four hours. This thing has been sitting in my truck, and you can see, according to this temperature gauge, it's pretty warm in here. Today's temperature outside is 82 degrees, so it's probably, reaching around 100 degrees or so in the truck. Now I don't recommend you leaving this in your truck, especially if you're using a small portable power station like this. You don't want it to get too hot inside your vehicle. 
Um, I didn't take it out, I left it in here today, and it's been staying not too bad in the truck, but something you wanna keep in mind. Now this is my smallest portable power station. I've been running it off of this since we left. It, I started it at a full charge, and I have not been doing pass-through charging. I've just been running it solely off of this just to see how it would run. And according to this, it's using around 30 watts, and that's about the same as far as this meter goes here. Now this cooler used about 60 watt hours of power in the last four hours, so it's averaging about 15 watt hours per hour. But the temperature currently is 34, and I've had it set to 32 degrees. So let's open it up and see what the thermometer in there says currently 39 degrees so it is a little bit warmer up top here but this stuff is very cold the bottles of water are very cold i kept the carrots and ranch up here but everything in here is nice and cold and the temperature is fluctuating a little bit but it has worked flawlessly today and didn't use a lot of power so very happy with this guys so that's pretty much enough testing i think for you guys to decide whether or not this cooler is right for you and if it's something that would fit your needs i'll leave a link down below in the description it will be an affiliate link and if you do use that link it will help support the channel and i will make a small commission from it so thanks for watching everyone if you found this video helpful please consider hitting that thumbs up and leaving a comment down below because it really helps my channel out. And please consider subscribing and sticking around for more content like this because I got a lot of cool things coming up in the future. Thanks for watching, everyone. Whew.